Good luck. Yes, the very best of luck with that. Now, whether you're the owner of house plants or you're lucky enough to have your own garden, uh, this month you could see your green space grow for next to nothing. So what is the secret to it all? Well, David Dominey is going to join us now. And, David, you look majestic in the sunlight, I just have to say. You really do. Just the sunlight bouncing off your mane. Wonderful <laughs> sight. It's just... It's a lovely thing, David. <laughs> Thank you very much, Craig. And, you know, by the end of this item, I'm going to empower you to grow all of your own plants. Because I know you said to me that you have a bit of difficulty with cuttings and things like that. I'm going to be giving the easy step-by-step -step guide because, you know, like any hobby, really, gardening is. Many of us have never cooked before, and our first experience from our mum's cooking is when we're in student digs or a bedsit, and we don't start by cooking duck galantine or, or even cocker van. We start by beans on toast or a baked jacket. Uh, so I'm going to give you the beans on toast and baked <laughs> jacket starting way for you, Craig, and everybody who's never propagated plants before. Here are the easy steps that you can do, and certainly with many of us who've got kids at home at the moment, it's a great way to engage children in with, with nature. And I'm going to start off by talking about plants that just give you babies. They just give you baby plants easy. And one of the simplest ones and most popular with, with my children is okay. little strawberry plants. Because strawberry plants actually, uh, it's buy one, get 20 free. Because first of all, they start producing the really tasty fruit. And then right now, so it's very topical, they start producing what are called runners, which come off from the main plant. And at every point, a little baby plant grows. There you can see the foliage. And there underneath are little roots and you, you move further down and there's an, another one over here. So the best thing to do is to, I usually leave them connected. Some people cut them off, but you can consider this as almost an umbilical cord to guarantee success. And then on the ground, I leave them attached to the strawberry plant and periodically put a few pots and pot them up. They will root into there and then eventually you, you cut them free and you've got your own baby plant. So it's, it's almost foolproof because it's connected to the original and it'll root in pots as you go. And I got from my strawberry patch just over there about 80 plants last year. Easy, it's great fun, it's healthy and sustainable at the same time, saving money. Now, for those of you who've got house plants, one of the, the, the best producer of baby plants is the spider plant. Really easy to care for. It's a great air cleaner inside your home. Takes away nasty toxin, produces fresh oxygen, but it also produces its own little babies. Look, there's a whole range of them at the end, and there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can uh, just take hold of one of the baby plants that you've got there, get a glass of water, situate it in the glass of water like that, and then stand it on the pot, and you'll find that it'll root within the water area. If it's a bit awkward to do that, you can, in fact, just get a glass, pull it off, make sure that the base of the root is in the water. I put a little bit of silver foil on the top, really, to stop the evaporation to make sure that it remains in water, and it will grow. So there are simple, easy ways to, to grow plants that are naturally wanting you to produce them. But taking cuttings is another very popular one, and there are so many ways to do it. Uh, I don't certainly have the time to, to go through the details, but this is a, a Forsythia. It's a plant that produces masses of gold flowers really early on in the season. We see all our streets full of it around about the same time that daffodils are about. And there are different stages of cutting. We call these hardwoods, which, are, which is almost like a pencil-type stem. We do those during the winter. Then there's softwood, which is very young foliage, or the semi right or green one. I'm just going to pull one off here, which is just a little cutting. I remove the lower leaves. First thing to look at is really where the leaf used to be, there's a bit of a swelling. We call that a node. That's where all the, uh, the energy, all the hormones of the plant. So I cut through that. Um, some people use a little bit of rooting hormone powder. It gives them an extra start. You dip it into there. Alternatively, some people use a bit of honey because it's got uh, a little bit of antiseptic properties and antifungal and you dip into there and then you just pop them into containers um, like that, dip it into position, keep it well watered. Now, for those of you who are thinking, hold on a minute, that looks really easy for you <laughs> to do as a horticulturalist. Here's what I did a month ago. I just grabbed some branches from the, from, from the bush. We were pruning at the side and I dunked them 
in uh, some water. And as you can see here, just on the windowsill, you've got all that root growth from these plants. Propagating isn't as difficult as you think, and it's worth just giving it a go. Sometimes it's difficult for the plant to go from water into a pot if you've got a lot of roots, because it's used to just getting lots of water. It's usually better to pot it into some peat-free seed and cutting compost to get it going. Now, let me do a few more real winners. If you haven't done cuttings before, one of the easiest is rosemary. Now, rosemary is a great plant, incredibly healthy to, to eat, great to trigger memories as well. The fragrance is fantastic. Oh, and very uh, and good for you your hair, to do, David. To take off. Oh. Very good for your very hair. Rosemary oil is very good for your, your, hair. Good for your hair. B6. Is that what you use on yours? Yeah. And it, I tell you, it's, oh, right. it's well, quite I, I precise. Tried that. Do you use it on yours? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh, what about, like what about Craig? What do you use on yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't tell you, David. Now we give away that secret. Um, I have to say, David, it's, it, it looks so well, simple. Watch this there. That is a it looks so simple. That's a simple cutting there for a rosemary. All I do, a bit of peat-free compost in there. Great activity to do with children too. Um, where's my little dibber? Here it is. It's where's a little dibber, David? Side. Dib a hole in there. Got it. Don't forget the dibber. A little bit of rooting hormone powder in. And they are the most easiest plant. And it's an exact clone of the original plant. Now, you can do it with a whole host of other things. A big popular plant is the uh, mother-in-law's tongue. You can propagate it very easily because it produces little babies on the side. But if you want something dramatic, let me just grab that leaf there. There we go. Just take a leaf from it. Uh, what I do is I just clean up the cut, move that out of the way. They're so easy to propagate in so many different ways. And the leaf itself becomes its own cutting. Uh, you can cut it into individual sections. The secret is to remember which way it up. And you insert it into the compost and keep it watered. Now, here's one wow. that I did a little bit earlier. From that, you start to see it produce a little baby on the side. And when that's big enough, of course, it's always better to leave the original leaf because that's still feeding as it goes. You can produce a baby plant. And if you want something even easier than Sorry, that... Sorry, Dave, just one second. How, how long does it take for the little babies to grow from that one? How, how long is that process? Well... What, what I've done before, where I've just done a short cutting like that, and I've dropped it in, in, into, into just a glass of water on the windowsill, and you can usually see roots forming uh, anything from, from about 10 days on a warm windowsill. Wow. It's really worth a go. And, and this is the one I was coming on to with a little shot glass. This is a very popular plant, uh, otherwise known as a, a, it's a crassula or a money plant or a jade plant. Literally, a simple leaf plucked from the side of the plant, dropped into a shot glass with a little bit of water in there, you'll see that producing little white roots uh, within a couple of weeks, something similar to that, and you pot it up, and you've got your own baby plant. It's a great thing to have a go at, engaging the garden, and once you start taking cuttings and growing from seed, this hobby will grab onto you, and you'll be, uh, you'll be producing so much beauty for the garden for free and a great deal of fun at the same time. Ah, uh, I, I feel you. the urge to clap. It was that enjoyable. Well, Brilliant. Amazing. Think of the money you would save doing that. I mean, house plants can get really expensive. Right. Brilliant. That's just a lovely thing to do. Just magic, isn't it? It's just nature magic. Fantastic. <laughs> David, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, thank now, after